Hi again. Today, children, we're going to talk about insects. When I was a boy, we used to get jam jars, mason jars, glass jars, whatever you call them. And we would put some flowers in there and we would go and we would take the jar and we would take the lid and we would go like that and we would catch bees. That was fun. We used to have a contest to see how many you could get without getting stung. Uh, I can't remember what the record was, something about 15 or 16 or something like that. A lot of people got stung. <laughs> but it was good, especially when you let them go. Now most people didn't because they figured it was stupid because you got a jar full of angry bees. I thought it was fun to just take the lid off and wave them at people, but that's me. Um, nobody ever got stung, I'm not that bad. But, this memory was triggered today because I went on a barbecue last week with the delectable and edible Nikki, and we stopped on the Niagara River, set up a barbecue with some charcoal, had a steak, beautiful. We're sitting under the trees and enjoying the sun going down, thought nothing about it. About three days later, I got this in the back of my head, it's really been bugging me for a day or two. I thought I got sunburn on my scalp, you know how these things work. Anyway, there's a little, tiny little thing there, and I thought it was a knot of hair, so I'm getting really irritated by it, so I just can't get, think I'll pull it out. And imagine my surprise when it's moving. Ugh. It's a dog tick. Somehow it got onto my head and lodged itself there. I, <laughs> don't get me wrong, I shower, I brush my hair. This thing was not coming off, it was attached. Um, I took some of my skin with it when I got it loose. I thought it was a, a zit or something, I ripped it off. And it's still moving, this thing is still alive. The worst thing cockroaches, you can beat them. You can slam them with saucepans and they still keep coming back for more. Kind of scary. And I'm thinking it's a good thing that I was karmically so good to these bees all those years ago because if I wasn't, I'd have probably got the mother of all ticks. Anyway, Nikki went online and did a little bit of digging about this. He said, oh, you've been bitten. And discovered that it's possible to get Lyme's disease, which is not as you think a green fruit growing out the top of your head. It's um, some kind of debilitating neurological thing uh, transmitted by ticks of varying sizes and shapes. So you ended up going online, go through a whole database of these things. Was it this one? Was it this one? Was it this one? No. It was a dog trick, it was a big brown beastie. About the size of a ladybird. About flat. Tiddly, we think tiddlywink. Uh, yeah, so I've been paranoid for the last couple of days. I don't have any scalp left. <laughs> I'm trying to find more before they find me. It's not funny, don't laugh. Um, I don't think that there are any left because there's nothing left except a raw, massive skin where I've been doing this. It's not as gross as it sounds, it's quite hygienic really. Anyway, it reminded me of the bees I used to catch as a kid. Lilac were the best. Little purple violets. See? They were good. You could end up with a dozen bees in a jar, no problem. Some kids used to just put them on the wall and go get another jar. By the end of the week or the summer, they'd have a collection of jars full of dead bees. Which I thought was a bit of a freak move, because I think that everything's got a right to live. Uh, so, I want to put my hand on the record, uh, hand up now, on the record. All those years ago, guys, when you came and all those jars were broken, that was me. 
Yeah. Line up the jars. Bang! With a brush straight through the middle of them. And just keep running because <laughs> these might be half dead but they're pissed and they don't care who let them out. They only care who let them in, so. It's my good cause, cosmic deed for the day. Anyway. Enough for that. Rambling on further. Big car. Big train. Bored now. I'm going. I'm going to go and get some peas. Over here, they tend to eat garden. I don't know, like snow peas or snap peas or uh, monge too, as they call. Them. They think I'm weird because I eat garden peas. I have to go and buy them in the shell pod and pop them out. Oh, beautiful. I think I'm weird because I do that. I think they're weird because they don't. Don't figure. I, forget, I used to grow up them. Yeah, here we go again. When I was about eight, uh, my dad died when I was seven. Mom remarried when I was about eight, nine. This guy thought that he'd make a man of me at that age by letting me, letting me do the garden. Uh, which meant digging it, hoeing it, turning it, weeding it, planting it. It was an allotment. It's a hundred feet long allotment. It doesn't sound a lot, but when you're nine, that's about 300 feet. I mean, I'm not that tall now. So, I had to dig and grow and plant this whole thing and uh, harvest. We did peas, we did carrots, we did tomatoes, we did uh, cabbage. Um, they did a bunch of stuff. Parsnips, I remember we tried one here. Anyway, I got a taste for a vegetable and fruit. Uh, not the any fruit, but peas. I love peas. So, every time it came around time to harvest these, I would work a handful for me and a handful for the bucket, a handful for me and a handful for the bucket. I love them. It's right off the vine. Beautiful. Right up to when I was on the road doing the uh, all the sales jobs and the delivery jobs in England, I was... I loved that job. I used to tell people I got paid to listen to the radio. Because you'd set up in the morning, you'd get to where you needed to be about lunchtime, an hour's work, and then you'd set off back. Or you go bump, 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 bump. I used to drive all across the country. Literally, Scotland down to Cornwall, everywhere. Uh, but the beauty of it was, I got to choose where I was going and when I needed to be there, and I planned my own route. route. Uh, and I knew where all the farm shops were. So I never bothered buying lunch. Now, off season, I spent most of my time eating out of the uh, petrol station, junk food, snack shops. But in the summer, I'd be stopping off and buying a pound of tomatoes, a pound of apples, a pound of peas, everything, man. It was uh, a great deal of fun. I know it was very healthy. Even though I was on three packs of smokes a day. Which I don't do anymore. I haven't had a cigarette for I don't know how long. Which is really good. Anyway, that's enough about me for one day. Thanks for listening again. And uh, I'm going to try and keep this a little bit more regularly from now on. The delay has been, I just got promoted at work. So. Been a little bit of a crazy time. You're looking at a marketing specialist for a New York software company. So I'm doing websites, I'm doing brochures, I am doing newsletters, I am doing uh, Google Analytics and AdWord campaigns, and all kinds of good stuff. It's in the creative stuff with Photoshop, which I love, and I'm getting paid for it now. Yes. Anyway, that's why it's been a little bit hit and miss because. Uh, you see enough of a computer, or sometimes, as has been happening recently, I've been doing 60 to 80 hour weeks. It's not so much physically draining, but you get sick of looking at a computer. 
that includes editing these things together. But I want to keep on top of it because I like to ramble and I like, hope you like to listen. So if you have any requests or, hey Carl, what happened in 1936? Send it in and I'll ask, answer the question. But that was a trick question because I wasn't around in 1936. Uh, I'll probably look it up on Wikipedia. <laughs> anyway, that's me done. I'm gone for now. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you on the next time. Bye-bye for now.